boom, boom. I'm gonna shoot you right down. Welcome to another Fragrance Quickie, and today's topic is Mona Diorio's Le Nombre Dior Oud with highlighted notes of Alamy Green Mandarin, Petty Grain, Patchouli, Osmanthus, Nargamalda, Cedar, Oud, and Ambergris. And what could I possibly think about this spendy devil? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't know, this is my second Oud fragrance review in a row, and I love Oud. Is it possible for me to give two thumbs down in a row for Oud fragrances? I don't know! Let's find out! Ooh. Now I can already see the faces of sheer disgust and disbelief going on out there. I hope I have not caused any brain aneurysms, or any mild strokes. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> but I have my reasons. It is what it is. So let's get into it. I don't know how quickie of a review this is going to be because I've got a few things to say about this one. <laughs> let's start off with the scent, I guess. When I first got this, you're all pumped. You get this. It arrives, you know. Uh, you're going on an oud journey. You're like me. You're thinking the price behind this, $525. You get it. It comes in this beautiful presentation. So, immediately you're glamored by all of that. And you're, you're like, yes, I cannot wait. Well, the first time that I sniffed this, I had a buddy over too. I sniffed it and I was like, fuck. I was so disappointed so disappointed uh, it came off uh, feminine to me right away was not at all what I was looking for in a $525 oud fragrance what I would expect to get <laughs> and it came off feminine to my friend as well and immediately we, we went out to lunch and it was bothering me so much that I even included the waitress in on this fragrance and I had her sniff it and she's like yeah, it smells pretty feminine, so I'm like, damn it. <laughs> and, I don't know, I've had this for about a year now, so off and on, you know, every now and then I'll break it out and wear it to see if anything changes. Well, nothing changes. Every single time I wear this, I feel the same. You know, the feedback that I get from it, I do get people saying that it smells feminine. I got someone today, in fact, that said the first thing that came to their mind was a 50-year-old lady. Uh, I did get people that like it, though. Uh, I did get this girl that liked it, and she said that, uh, <laughs> for her though, it did smell kind of feminine. Uh, this one girl really liked it though, uh, <laughs> said that it seemed okay for a man, but most off, most people this came across as feminine to them. It does to me. So let's talk about the scent a little bit now. Uh, there are some things that I appreciate about this. Longevity and projection, both excellent. There is... A dark woody side to this fragrance oh which would have been nice would have showed its face a little bit more but quickly what envelops the spice and the woody tone of this fragrance and I mean envelops it is this feminine honeyed sweet floral the osmanthus and it just for me takes over the whole fragrance and ruins the whole composition for me and when this dries down you know they mentioned ambergris in here as the note. Well, to me, it feels more like a mild, very soft, gentle amber accord, and the spices really shine then. You lose the osmanthus, you lose the woody notes of this fragrance, and it becomes more of a gentle, spiced amber. And I wouldn't really think of ambergris, at least not like the exotic, animalic kind. It just becomes very safe, soft, and friendly amber, which is okay, I guess. <laughs> uh, and when we're talking about the woody, part of this fragrance. I wouldn't even call it oud. I mean, it does not shine on my skin at all. I would say the woody facets of this fragrance come from the Nagamoda, which, words to describe that, would be woody, mossy, incensey, smoky, and the cedar that's in this as well. Uh, I think that's more of the woodiness going on in here than the oud. If the oud is here, it's way, way back there somewhere, <laughs> hiding out. And that gets me off to another point about this. What kind of ticks me off, what kind of sucks about people taking fragrances and putting the word oud in them and showcasing them and charging you a ton of money 
because they say ood on them. And then when they barely use anything in there to where it's barely detectable, just does not sit well with me whatsoever. You know, if you're going to showcase a fragrance like Frederick Mall's Vetiver Extraordinaire, if that fragrance, if I blind bought that and it showed up, and that fragrance actually is like 95% vetiver, it showcases that note with spices and other notes complementing the vetiver. But the vetiver is the star front. You know, that's what a perfumer, that perfumer did with vetiver. So that's what I expect out of an oud fragrance. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna put the word oud on there, oud, the beautiful oud that you're paying all of that extra money for, should be up there front and center. I'd like to see what you do with that. Make it beautiful, make it prominent, and dress it up, you know, in your own creative way. But still, that's the main star. That's the way it should be. I was talking with a friend today, and we're talking about this fragrance, and he was like, yeah, it's like if you took a sea bass, expensive fish, and uh, batter fried it. You know, you just ruin it. Or, or I was thinking, you know, if I showed up to like a steakhouse, ordered a $50 steak, maybe I would dress that steak up a little bit with some seasoning, you know, just adding a little bit of something to that beautiful, luscious steak. But if they showed up to my table, <laughs> then I ordered a $50 steak dinner, and they showed up to my table, and they had a plate full of spice with a little tiny bit of meat sitting on top, I'd be pissed. That's not what I ordered. I ordered steak, damn it. <laughs> so in a way, a fragrance kind of like this pisses me off, because what are you paying for? What's the extra money for? What's the extra? Her fragrances, don't get me wrong. Uh, I am a fan of Mona Diorio. Uh, I really appreciate and have admiration for a few of her fragrances, no doubt about that. But this one just kind of rubs me the wrong way. I mean, this one is $300 more than the rest of her line. And what are you paying for? If the oud's not there, if the oud isn't in your face, what you paid for, what's supposed to make this so expensive, what are you enjoying about it? I just don't get it. Are you... Are Is the 300 bucks for that little fancy box you get so I gotta tell you after the initial wow is over about that box if you really look at it it's nothing but a bigger box like cheap perfume like cheap jewelry comes in <laughs> that's all it is it's just a fancy little box now at the end of this video uh, I will have up close and personal video of the box and bottle so you can check it out but boy <laughs> I sure I'm I sure I feel bad because I am really tearing this to shreds, but that's how I feel. That's the honesty That's what I Gotta say that's exactly how I feel if, if you're like me and you're and you go and you're thinking I'm not blind by this sucker man This has got to be it and you hear all of the fantastic talk out there that people just rave about it And I don't know I don't get it <laughs> unless it works totally different for you, but it does not work for me at all. One bit. This is not one oud that even makes it close to a top 10 for me and definitely not worth the price tag. I don't know if people are just like I was at first. You get kind of excited. You get glamorized because of the price. You're like, ooh, 550 bucks, the pretty little box. And you're like, yeah, well, I don't know, man. <laughs> You can you can judge people, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. People, like a chick, can be beautiful, and you're like, hot damn, but then once you get to know her, what's inside is really not that impressive. And that's kind of like this, man. I ain't being fooled by the pretty packaging. No way! <laughs> it's what's inside that counts, man. At least for me it is, anyway. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this one. And I imagine you're going to tell me. Oh man, but it is what it is. Gotta report the truth, my thoughts. But if you would like to learn more about this fragrance, follow the links down below. I'm Dan Micker's Mish, and this has been, I don't know, a swindled kind of a quickie. Okay, here's a quick presentation of what you get when you purchase Mona Diorio's Oud. Here's the box I was talking about. Big, solid, and you open it up, 
like so. And there the bottle sits in there in this velvety soft kind of skin that's inside. And like I said, it kind of it reminds me of like a jewelry box, you know, that you get every time you purchase jewelry, really. And the bottle. The bottle's empty. This was from a split. My decant is kept in my cooler. But just like all the other Mona Diorio bottles, same thing. That's it. Worth 300 bucks? <laughs> I'm just using. But I don't think so. Boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna shoot you right down.